Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Doodling Through Education. For my CC students, this is cycle one, week 14, science. For everyone else, that just means we're going to be talking about the three kinds of rocks. Now, before before we get started, don't forget to head on over to doodlingthrougheducation.com. There's a link in the description. You can purchase workbooks that go along um, with each of these subjects, one for science and one for history. Um, there's four pages per week per subject, and I've divided them into quarters, so you can just buy them quarterly if that is helpful. Now, without further ado, Let's start doodling. Last week, we talked about the different parts of the geosphere. And if you remember, the crust of the Earth was one of those parts. Now, the crust is made up of three different types of rocks, and today we are going to discuss them. There is sedimentary, metamorphic, and igneous rock. So let's begin by talking about sedimentary rocks. They are produced primarily from the weathering of old rocks, and this breaks down the rocks into these smaller pieces or fragments, and this is what we call sediment. These loose pieces of sediment are typically then compacted or cemented together and during this process it forms this new type of rock, the sedimentary rock. Something that will help you to characterize sedimentary rock over other different types of rock is that when you look at it, it forms these layers. It almost looks like lasagna. These layers are distinguishable and between the different layers, Factors that can differ are color, particle size, and the arrangement. Each of these layers really helps to tell the history of the conditions at the time that that specific layer of sediment was deposited. It can also speak to how that sediment got there or how it was transported. And oftentimes we can see fossils or evidence of living things present in these layers. Sedimentary rock is also important because it contains the whole world's store of oil, natural gas, coal, salt deposits, and groundwater. So like I said, sedimentary rock can be formed in several ways. Some is formed when rocks are worn away by the rain or the wind or other elements of the weather. And this is called erosion. And during this process of erosion, those tiny pieces of the original rock is carried away to another place. And then these tiny fragments are then combined with maybe other fragments or mud. And as these layers of sediment build up, they can become compressed or squished down and cemented or bonded together. So how does this sediment get transported to another place? Well, we talked about one, it could be carried by water. It could also just be carried by gravity, the pushing down through the surface mud flows or glaciers can also play a part as well as wind blowing it to a new place now let's talk about metamorphic rocks these metamorphic rocks are formed when other rocks are affected by either great temperatures or great pressures now these rocks do not melt but what they are made of actually changes and forms these crystal type shapes due to that great temperature and great pressure. The name metamorphic comes from the Greek 
word meaning change of shape. So it makes sense why these rocks would be called metamorphic rocks. Metamorphic rocks can be formed from other types of rocks like sedimentary or igneous rocks, which we'll talk about in a minute, and typically forms where large sections of the Earth's crust come together. And these are called plates. And these plates push up against each other and create pressure. Another place that these types of rocks can form is places where hot, liquid rock called magma is forced through existing rocks, which heats them up and increases the pressure. Now, it is also possible that rocks can change to be a metamorphic rock in a quite less dramatic way. And this is when just layers of heavy rocks on top of these rocks put a lot of pressure on them. And then they can also become metamorphic in this way. Last, let's talk about igneous rocks. And igneous rocks are formed from magma. So this is molten or partially molten rock, which is in the interior of the earth where the temperatures are very, very hot. So magma exists at a temperature of 1,100 degrees Fahrenheit to 2,400 degrees Fahrenheit. Because magma is less dense than the surrounding rocks that are solid, it can rise toward the surface and may settle within the crust or it can erupt from a volcano and create a lava flow. Now, when this magma cools down, it returns back to a solid state. It is not magma anymore. And when it does this, that is when it becomes an igneous rock. Deep in the crust, if this hot magma does not actually erupt onto the surface, the temperatures and pressures are a bit higher than at the surface. And so this hot magma will cool slowly and it gives the compounds within the magma time to crystallize and large mineral crystals can develop when this happens. And this is how granite is made. But when magma erupts at the much, much cooler surface, it will solidify quicker and the minerals have little to no chance to grow. And so the rocks that are then formed from these are very fine grained with minerals so small they cannot be seen without a microscope. An example of this would be basalt. Now, if there are no minerals present in the magma at all, the rocks will look very glassy. And this is when obsidian is made. And that's all we have for today. Be sure to grab your workbooks and complete those four worksheets on the three different types of rock. Drop a comment if you'd like and let me know what is your favorite type of rock and have you seen all three different types of rock where you live? And on that note, remember to be kind, follow God's will, and take care. Bye.